Welcome. It's Jenkins Documentation Office Hours. It's the 11th of March, 2022. Uh, we're on the Asia Documentation Office Hours time. Thanks very much for being here. Topics on the agenda, news, the Linux installer switch from system five to system D. Um, she Code Africa Contributathon, a troubleshooting section for the user handbook and open PRs. Any other topics, Meg? That looks like good to me. Okay. So delighted Wednesday, we, we released uh, the latest LTS and Darren Pope and I uh, did a live stream today, 90 minute live stream on the changes. And there will be one or two more live streams on the changes uh, with the key things for the, the upcoming ones are likely the Red Hat, uh, Red Hat uh, System D update and the Debian slash System D update. Okay. So Darren was a, was, did, went through it and hit some bumps. And so he, he, he noted the same way I did that there are managing a system D based environment is new. It's different, right? System five right. in it. We're all familiar with it. We looked in the source code and the, the original Linux installer code was from 2008. So we've been using for almost the full life of Jenkins, this other form of init system. And so this change will probably bump into a number of surprises. Yes. Um, now that you and Darren do these, seem to do these live streams on every new major release, uh -huh. um, is there a reason that we don't put a link to that, like in the change log or something? We could, but it, the live stream always happens after it. Ah, and well, so we could do a PR against the change log afterwards. I don't know. Yeah, the, the change log really isn't well suited to hosting video inside of it. It's, mm -hmm. a, it's a bulleted list. But right. we could certainly, and we could, could certainly- add a link. We don't have to, I mean, we don't have to embed it. We could link. Well, we could, well, how about as a different angle? We could or, add a page to community.jenkins.io ah. with the uh, live stream. That would make sense, yeah. Because there it's a, then it's a, a place for a conversation about it and people could comment back and forth. I like. Yeah. I mean, that's, I, and Darren, Darren doesn't object to that. He, he likes that the videos are shared and he's glad that they're useful. Right. And they really are. So cool. Okay. So 2.338 released uh, UI improvements are continuing and uh, there's uh, lots to test and lots to explore. So next topic then was Linux installers. And so we've got on the switch from system five to system D, we've had uh, two, two bug reports come in, came, have come in. Uh, neither was a particularly, what I'd call a, 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 a really bad one, but one was that uh, they had to do, had to explicitly enable enable the service after upgrade. Oh. It, it's an easy command, system CTL, enable Jenkins. Right. And it's in the documentation that you need to do it. But I think previously in the environment they were in, it was it was already enabled. So that's a it's an interesting one. And whoever reads the documentation anyhow, especially well, before something goes wrong. Right. And then the other was that conflicting argument values were handled slightly differently. Ah. And that one is a fix is, is in a pull request. Okay. So one of the things that Basil Crow, who has created it, who did the development work for it, is that we need more troubleshooting um, guidance and we need 
more specific description of the information that makes a good bug report uh, for this type of bug, right? So this uh -huh. is this needs more data than other bug reports need. Yep. And I think the topic there is Basil's thinking right now is that he'll probably be the one who writes that, but we'll have to watch and see. Yeah. Cool. Progress then, on we're not working. Yeah, well, and and the section on the there is a doc section on on managing system D services, like we had discussed last week. Uh-huh. It has been created and published. Um, it's for me. It's still a little lightweight, but it will get better. Who wrote that? I did. Oh, okay. So I, what I Good. did was took our outline that we had created two weeks ago or a week ago. Uh -huh. This outline here, and filled it in. Oh, okay. So it's a good so, start. Yeah. Well, it was it was actually quite helpful to have had this list because it let me then sequence it prioritize it talk about why i should order them in this way or that way so it was really good yeah yeah all right all right so now next topic was she code she code africa and here uh Zinab and elizabeth oh actually i guess i should note tomorrow we have a twitter spaces session tomorrow with Zinab, Mark, and two others. And what Twitter Spaces is, provide odd live audio and allow questions and answers. So it's basically runs from my telephone and I connect in. <laughs> So this will be this. I've never done this before. We'll see how, be how it happens. Yeah, I don't know what's going to go on, you know, in terms of surprises. It's a kind of a worldwide thing. And I'm, I'm really impressed at the technique they're using. Really live audio worldwide from my telephone. Very impressive. What's going to be tough, though, in general, but especially your style, when they answer a question, you go, let me share my screen and show you how we do it. Right, and, and that's that's one that's not going to work, right? Because this is right. not a screen sharing thing. But the con the, the the inverse is that audio may actually work into Nigeria and into into Tanzania and you know places like that when video sharing is just too high bandwidth. Right. Yeah. Now, Zinab, I did submit three project ideas. Okay. For them, uh, and the three project ideas I thought were reasonable. They were, I, I've noted them somewhere, but there is one that I did not submit, and I've nice. I've double checked with Zinab, and she says, "Nope, please submit it, Mark." So I'll submit one, suggesting that they'll that we'll put a project manager on on it and mentor that project manager and have that project manager then help us. Okay. It'll be, I mean, train with the best, you know? Well, I'll train with, train with somebody. How about that? Yeah. I, I my statement stands. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. Great. Very kind of you. All right. Next topic then was a troubleshooting section. And here, I think we ought to just review, oops, wrong page. We ought to just review it. Let's take a, if you're willing, Meg, to review it with me. I would love to review it with you because I, if I was reviewing it on my own, I'd be sitting here. I wonder what Mark thinks about that. So this is perfect. Okay. So, so what she's done, this is the troubleshooting Jenkins section that we had discussed earlier. Mm -hmm. And what she's done is she's added it to the top toolbar and added a new section into the book for troubleshooting. All right. And then moved two of the pages, diagnosing errors and obtaining a thread dump to the new location. Good. So it's got some content already. And now the question is, I think one of the things we need to be sure of is, 
are we okay with having separate pages for each of the troubleshooting, interesting troubleshooting categories? And I think we are because we've been using that before, but let's, let's look at this and then let's explore it a little bit together to see how the navigation feels, et cetera. Okay, yeah, and I mean, in general, I think it's, it's good for, especially for a project like this, because you've got small pieces to update without multiple right. people don't run into each other. Exactly, yeah, so by, by partitioning it that way. So now if we look at the, where are the environments? Here's the environment. Okay, so view the deployment. Diraj, thanks for joining us. We're, you, uh, we're reviewing a, the troubleshooting section that was just proposed by, by Zenob. Okay, so troubleshooting Jenkins, there it is. Oh, I should make the screen bigger so that it's readable. Okay, so troubleshooting Jenkins right there. Ah. Okay, so resolving issues you might encounter while running Jenkins. This section is suitable for all Jenkins users. So diagnosing errors, and this is just a copy from, from the file where the same content exists elsewhere, a move is what it is. So we should check that the, that the move was successful, that a redirect actually works, and then obtaining a thread dump. So the idea is these, these subheadings seem, seem navigating correctly to me. So if I click left works for diagnosing errors, right works for obtaining a thread dump, and up works to find the top page. I, right. think, it's be, I think it's well enough behaved so, so now let's test the redirect. So just a moment while we check for redirect. Okay, documentation. And where is thread dump? Obtaining a thread dump is right here. So notice this URL, doc book system administration. So over here on this page, I'm gonna go there So this is the old location and it should automatically redirect us. It did, good, okay. All right. So did you, I don't know if you saw the, the flash there. I'm not sure that Zoom carries the flash like, forward. Right. What happens is, is the page, anywhere. the page will temporarily go to the location I gave, DocBook system administration it flashes up the URL it's going to, and then it takes us there. Cool. All right, so that worked for thread dump. And the other one was, was the other one she moved? Oh, diagnosing errors. Okay, so diagnosing errors is this one. And again, as a check here and here. Okay, system administration, redirect, and there we are. Good. Okay, now are there any other topics that we'd say, oh, that should be in a diag in a troubleshooting section? How about logs, reading logs and working with logs? There's um, something somewhere that I think it's weak, but I think there's something somewhere. Yeah, that's an interesting suggestion. Okay. And then, because what I'm thinking, um, on the for the index.a. page for this section, uh -huh. um, it would be nice if that had an introduction. Say, you know, that some you I don't know how how literary we want to be, but troubleshoot shooting is an art, and there's a lot of things. And um, what we're the section that's called diagnosing errors. I mm -hmm. might make that be common errors or something. That's not oh, how well, to uh, diagnose an error. It's we could that. well we could certainly certainly create yeah we can we could rename this page if that would help for or, me the but if it not even if it didn't at the beginning you said you know you can look at your you know look at your logs and they may give you a hint and if you look at your logs frequently enough you'll see when something is there that isn't usually there and that may be your hint um uh, and then you may need a um a thread dump and why you know, a word or two about why a thread dump is useful. And then whatever we call that section, say 
these are some things that frequently happen and this is you might look through this to see if you find your symptoms and you know these things happen and some of them they think we tell them how to fix them or how to diagnose mm. them and um but just to give you know so it because i like having this in all the little pieces for maintainability um but troubleshooting is such a you know it's a difficult subject because every trouble is different so mm -hmm. i'd like something that leads me into it says how how are we going to and we're not going to solve everybody's problems with this section at least not now right so but tell them something that gets them started good um, now where is the log stuff shoot it's in system administration oh you found it okay yeah it's right viewing, viewing logs. logs yep Okay, so that just tells me how I view. Yeah, I think that definitely. In fact, I'd make that the first. I would you agree, Mark? I mean, yeah, I'm thinking logically. Yeah, no, Mark. no objections. No objections for me. I'm prone to say, let's merge her change exactly as she did it, and then we can bring viewing logs as a as a separate That's another thing, as right. a separate change. Because I think, I think this this is a it's already a good start. And and then yeah, viewing logs feels like a very reasonable one. Yeah, troubleshooting. Are there other? Are there anything here? Now, that's not really troubleshooting. Okay. Now then, and I system information is really on the the on the on the Jenkins UI, so that should not move. That makes perfect sense, staying, and it's not troubleshooting. Right. But that's another thing with troubleshooting is we might end up with links to other docs that we leave where there are. Mm, right. Um, some of these other subjects, there might be a trouble, there might be troubleshooting information in them that we want it to stay where it is, but we might add that. So you go, like Daniel was saying for security, that he wants one place that he can go to and see everything that's out there. Right. And and Even I think it might be some links to stuff, et cetera, but it's it's right here. If he's if he's looking at the whole world of what we're saying of security, it's all here. And I think for troubleshooting, yeah. And I think I think that makes sense, right? There are there are themes that are so compelling, securing Jenkins, um managing Jenkins. I think those those fit as as really they should be their own section. Okay, good. Yeah. All right, well, so then given that, now I haven't reviewed the text, but I think the text she created, the only text that was brand new of what she created was actually uh, the little bit of a section intro that looked fine to me. So I'm prone to say, let's migrate, let's merge it. We could, we could, or we could, I'm finding the most of the stuff could use a good edit, but there's also well, and edit. and if you want to do an edit, that's we can certainly do that as well. Be interesting. We could pull it up and just read through it. Maybe do we have time? Do we need? Have other we do. More pressing? Yeah, well, let's let's check with Diraj. Diraj, anything that that is pressing for you that we should be doing? Yes, I nothing important. Just one topic. I got a mention from. Uh, um, I don't know how to pronounce his name. So he tagged you and me on the viewing the change log preview. If you go to your GitHub, you'll be able to see it as well. So I wanted to discuss more on that, like what it means. Uh, so viewing the change log preview. Okay, so is this a pull request? This was part of the pull request on, oh, on this. Oh, very nice. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Well, okay. So what was your question? <laughs> uh, Gavin worked on the previous site and uh -huh. uh, he is making it possible for us to make the uh, change log also viewable on that deployed site. Is that what he means? Exactly. Yeah. So, so if we, if we if we show the problem, here's the problem. Oh, here and here's one I need to merge. He's he's approved it. I'm just going to merge this. Okay, while we're here. All right. So back to the problem is let's look at the change log for the next release. So here's the change log for the next release, and here is the environment. And if I view the deployment, the next release would be 2.339. 
When I click download, it takes me to 2.338. And when I look at the change log, it never mentions 2.339. So yes. the reality is the preview doesn't show me. I have to do a lot more work to, to read the preview of the change log. So I'm delighted that he found a way to make this work. Now, what I didn't check, I guess we should check. Let's look at this one and see if it does show oh, it. That is very nice. Yeah, why not, hmm. right? I mean, it. if we're lucky, we'll look at download, right? And it shows 338 here. Weird. No, okay, so I'm not, I'm, I'm not, I'm, so maybe I don't understand what he's doing. Let's see what he's doing. Okay, so he says, partials release header, what's new in, partials release header, HTML panel. Hmm. Okay, what did he change? H3. Do you see what he changed, Diraj? I'm not clear what actually was modified. Okay, page.release version. What's new in what if release dot if release dot date? If release dot banner. Okay, so I think that's a no op. He moved that into a, a different location. Oh, 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 oh. Change log dash preview. So I have to go to a different URL. This is a preview change log. Okay, so so is the 2.339 change log empty? <laughs> okay, now, oh, oh, it is empty on his branch. Okay, so how do we how do we ever test this? I mean, it looks like he's provided a page, and so yes. it will make it possible for us to navigate to it. Now I don't know how how you well how a someone who's not one of us experts okay weekly releases change log past releases nope hmm okay so so the change log is here but if i go to change log dash preview at least the page he's created exists yes so in my world, let's see. So now the question is, is it okay that this is being deployed to the public site? Yeah, maybe it is actually. Maybe, so what this will do is this creates on Jenkins.io, this same exact thing, change.preview. This is not specific to CI. This is going to be giving people a preview of what the next change log would contain. Yes. I actually think that's kind of a cool feature. I'm not sure I'm ready to promote it yet, but I think it's it's sort of an interesting feature. Yes, but uh, it's not for users, right? It it's for only for uh, reviewers. Well, it as but as I but I, I guess my point here is that it absolutely can be for users if they want it. So mm -hmm. if they say, what's coming next week? What's, what's in the oh, next okay. one? This will show it to them. Now we won't, we mm -hmm. may have no hyperlinks to this page. We may have no, no, nothing that leads them to it. But if it were, mm -hmm. if we were to find it helpful, it will actually be available on Jenkins.io on the official site, not just on preview pages. You know, I don't object to links because what I'm thinking is if you're not fairly sophisticated, you shouldn't be going near a weekly release. Oh, now that's a terrible thing to say. We expect weekly releases to be production quality, but okay, um, you're right. No, They're not LTS. No, I'm um no, I'm not talking about quality at all. I'm just talking about what they are supposed to be. Oh, um, okay. 
they are, I mean, they're supposed to be as good as we can make them, but, but part of that process is having them be screwed up sometimes so that we find the problems before they deploy into, I mean, if, if I ever found anybody who had produce, had uh, deployed a weekly release into a production environment, I have no sympathy for them about anything that could happen. <laughs> oh, Daniel would, Daniel would object to that, but I, I think, I think, yeah, okay, let me. Security release would be an, ex would be an exception, a but a, a, a regular, a non-security release. So I'm going to, I'm going to offer a little different perspective that probably has the mm -hmm. same actual ultimate outcome. Okay. Anyone who chooses to use a weekly release is also choosing to upgrade every week. Mm -hmm. And if you are not upgrading every week, you are for some period until you next upgrade to a weekly, you are running unsupported because the community does not take care of anything other than the most recent, recent weekly release. Right. So, so for me, the choice, the choice weekly or LTS is driven mostly by how often do you want to upgrade? And if you're not willing to upgrade every week, your only other choice is upgrade, upgrade monthly. Right. But it's for people who like being on the cutting edge. Right. In, and there will be exceptions, but most of the time it should not be a production environment and certainly not a production environment for a large sensitive organization. Right. Just, and, and, and that I agree with. It's, it's going to be more likely to be broken than LTS is. Absolutely. I mean, if I run one of these large organizations and there are features coming that I'm very anxious for, I might be putting this onto a test system and really beating on it while it's a weekly release. That would be good. But again, that's not for your grandmother. You know, that's something that your grandmother doesn't do. That's somebody who's pretty sophisticated, knows what they're doing. And they know that what they're running has a high probability of failing. That's why they're doing it. Right. Excellent. So Diraj, any, ins any concerns from you that would stop us from merging this? So nothing, I think it looks great. Um, it can be featured, as you said, on the main change log page at the top saying what's next. Uh, and that would redirect, us, redirect them to this page that um, he has created. Yes, yes, so good. We, we have that option. It's not, it's not implemented that way yet, but that is an option for us. And it's certainly nice that it's already available for us to use in our reviews. So, so we can look at the change log in context. Great. Um, one more thought, go back to the, to the page, the sample page though, with content free. Okay. This one. Uh -huh. Yeah. I'm wondering, I don't know. But, People should know what a weekly release is, but I could accidentally trip onto this and not really, I wonder if that should have a little warning that this is for unreleased, unsupported, or this is beta software or something like that. Well, so it says this is a preview change log for upcoming releases. Right. Now maybe, yeah, maybe it should I'm say for far. an upcoming release because it's not really a change log for multiple releases. It's this True. is the change logging for, for the next release. Mm -hmm. It's, it's not plural. I mean, plural, I think is a misstatement. It, it's not yeah. a, a crucial misstatement, but I think it's a misstatement. Right. And maybe, maybe this should be a link to both weekly and LTS. Yeah, I would, there should be one, you know, I, I, and I, I would, I don't know. I would love to see something here that includes the phrase not for production. Hey, and I am not willing to put that phrase because I disagree wholeheartedly and oh, okay. I would get, I would take heat from Daniel oh, on that one. And for a security release, that would not necessarily be. Right. That it's just, we don't want to, we don't want to make pejorative comments towards the, the weeklies they are they are not as heavily vetted as LTS, but yeah, Dan, I like Daniel's and, and Oleg gave me the same feedback. He said, look, don't don't you dare be saying bad things about weekly. We intend for it to be good. Oh yeah. See, well, the question is my what I'm saying I think is good. So that's the difference. Uh, okay. <laughs> so so Shall we shall we offer a suggestion a couple of suggestions then on the pull request? Yeah, just 
I mean, just a little bit. I'm, you know, something okay, to so make let's... sure that people understand, you know, the difference between what you see here and what you see for LTS. Right. Okay. So let's let's offer this one. And we are going to insert some additional text. And the, see that, now wait a second, what's that? Okay. Oh, oh, remember this is Ruby and it's do using, don't get me started on languages that use indentation to indicate mm, 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 mm. programmatic. And then don't you dare complain to me about Python. <laughs> I love Python. I don't want to hear any more complaints about it's using white space for indentate for, uh. for syntactic structure. Okay. So this is a preview change like for up upcoming releases for publicly available releases see the weekly release change log now we need to put the word and in the correct location and see the okay i think we want it like this the word the should not be included in the hyperlink right right and do we want a really long sentence or do we want separate sentences maybe even Oh, okay. Tell me how you mean there. So, uh, yeah. um, well, let's go back. There's a preview change along for the upcoming release. Oh, oh, right. Okay. You start there. Yes, and that is correct. You're right. Absolutely. Um, and now, this for publicly available releases see the right. weekly change along and then period and say for long term ah. releases. Okay. All right. Very good. I see what you're saying. Yes. For publicly available weekly releases, see the weekly release change log. And now if we take the same text for publicly available long-term support, long support releases, comma, is there a comma after this in this phrase? Is that correct? I think for so. Yeah, okay. I was trying to decide how anal I should be if I should keep my mouth shut. Okay, yeah, so for it. public available long term support releases, see the long term support change log with this. And do we want a period at the end of sentence? There we go. Good boy. Yeah, right. So I think we got it, and I think I got the indentation correct. This is a preview change log for the upcoming release for publicly available week, weekly releases. Oh, do we really need the, the word? Do we really release? need the word? Do we really no. need? Oh, for the upcoming, it is. Yes, that's correct. Weekly, you're right. Because this will, this, I, I don't see us using this for LTS. I guess, or no. if we do, it would have to be a different URL. It would be right. change log dash pre stable dash preview or something. Mm -hmm. Okay. So for public, for we don't need to say publicly available. It's just a weekly release, right? Okay. Um, except wait a second. Okay. Um, no, but the this is for the weekly release. No, this is the upcoming weekly release. Right for the upcoming weekly release. So that's but it's just saying I'm, for weekly releases that are already published or that's awkward. Or, okay. Or for published weekly releases. Okay, published. That I'm not like a man, I don't know. Okay, like that. Um long term support doesn't because long term support is long term support. Ah, it's just okay. we've got two we're talking about two different types of weekly release. This is ah, one I see your release. point is by using the modifier here, the upcoming there and using published here, we make it clear. Right. That makes sense. Okay. Good. All right. Oh. This is a preview change log for the upcoming weekly release for published. And alternate, we could say for the current weekly release. Well, except the change log really covers all the, oh, well, it covers many okay. weekly releases. Okay. Oh, published works then. Okay. Nobody reads this stuff that carefully anyhow. 
Right, you <laughs> should, right. should quit obsessing about this. Um, fair enough. Okay. So yeah. now I don't, I, and I have not so, so discussed um, minor phrasing change as our suggestion to link to weekly and to LTS change logs. Could say to help people who might get to the site accidentally or something. Those who see the site will know that the other change logs are for the for releases. Good. Yeah. Okay. All right. Now, was there something else that we wanted to touch in this? No, I think I think that's pretty good. Okay. And I don't claim to know interesting yeah i i don't read ruby real well and so i don't know what that's doing yeah <laughs> i I'm, hope i I'm assume trying to be kind to trust gave it yeah that he knows what he's doing well and this is Zbinek who's done this Zbinek Konechny from i think croatia or from the czech republic uh, is that the name you couldn't pronounce dirash Yes, now I know how to pronounce. Uh, well, I, just just so we're clear, that is my feeble attempt to pronounce it, but I've asked him how to pronounce it. And what you're hearing me say is a rough approximation of what he said. So, Spinach. Spinach, yeah. So the, the Z is actually sounded. And so, yeah. Nice. Okay, so. I, yeah, I think, I think we still approve it and the optional phrasing change approved if, whether you accept the phrasing change or not. Yes. Great. Okay. And then that'll give him time tomorrow and I'll plan to merge this tomorrow start of my working day. Okay. So, great. Do we Excellent. give him something to tell him we really like it? Oh, you already uh, said this looks great. Okay. Yes. Yeah. And and absolutely thrilled with this. This is wonderful. Diraj, thanks yeah. for thanks for noting it to us. I had not seen this pull request yet. Yes. Uh, even I saw it right now. So very very helpful that he has done this. Very considerate, right? <laughs> very very yeah. That's that's a great help. Okay, so well, so hey, since we're in the mode of, I think we we were okay with. Was there something stopping us from? Oh, yeah. Are any objections, Meg? Back to our troubleshooting Jenkins. Was there something that we? I want to read. I want to read. Oh, you want to read text. You're going to read the text for the uh, for the diagnosing errors. This the page that was just, moved. Let's just glance at it. As, see, see yeah, that's great. Well, we've. I got, saw something we've got about that. choking on. You know, that first one is. Your system's right. choking, and I already got busted for calling something brittle, which I still <laughs> think is a perfectly reasonable term. But choking, okay. I'm less willing to stand up for. Okay, so um, is this text big enough for you to read it? Yes. There. All right. Okay. I mean, I don't know how much do we. Yeah, I don't. I mean, I'm. If your Jenkins started choke, if your Jenkins started choking with out of memory error, there are four possibilities. I don't like the use of there. I don't like beginning with the if. I don't like started. I don't yeah, like choking. So, so um how would you like to phrase it? Um out of memory errors okay. can be caused or Um, out of I want I was gonna say occur regularly, but that's got a problem. Okay. Um, um, out of memory errors um, may happen for yeah, one of four. Or yeah, 
Okay, I can, and I can give the exact number. My problem there is then I have the challenge that I'm never sure if it, it doesn't match. So right now they. So I add another one. I take one away. Um, could say multiple since several is supposed to have. Oh yes, six good. Or, seven. Oh. or for different. How about many different reasons? Right. Is that good um, enough? That works, yeah. Okay. Okay, so that gets rid of the choking. I like that. Mm-hmm, gets rid, get rid of a lot of stuff. Okay. Okay. You just wanna... It's just so the, the first one is saying growing data size. Right. Without saying you're leaking memory. The next True. is process growing because you're processing data. Now, headroom is not a common phrase, I think, is it? No, uh uh. It doesn't sound right. Jenkins is leaking memory in case we need to fix that. And adding more memory actually doesn't fix memory leaks, it just right. hides them. So, Okay, so there are opportunities to improve this. You want to, we've got about five minutes. You want to, I know, take and this. Let's, let's merge it. Okay. <laughs> and always go back and edit it later, right? Okay, well, so I'm going to, I'm certainly going to, we can, we can take this suggestion and commit it. Yeah. I, I'm sure Zenob will not object. So I'm going to say approve. And then what we're going to do is we're going to mark it for automated merge, commit the suggestion. You have a diabolical gleam in your eye all of a sudden. I'm trying to find my did I did I drop the screen share? Yes. <laughs> Sorry, yes. I was trying to find the mute button. Uh -huh. Aha. <laughs> I was trying to not deafen you with my uh -huh. with my cough. <laughs> it's not a terrible cough. But now you Sorry, I dropped the yeah. screen share. So here we go. So I'm gonna enable auto merge. Do you need a drink? I do, but you I'm only drink water. two minutes away from ending the session. So I have enabled auto merge and it will merge as soon as our suggestion has been evaluated in CI and passed. Okay, um, go back to your minutes. Do you wanna note that we'd like to see index.adoc to have an introduction to this? Uh, okay, which one was that? I was I was just going to put it in the minutes from the meeting. Okay, want to add more? Oh, so yeah, I can share my screen again. Just a minute. Mm -hmm. Share screen. Okay, want to add more content to the index to the top level troubleshooting page, mm. and more entries for based on the notes from Gavin Mogan. Is that a yeah. fair way to say it? Yes. Great. All right. Um, Noted. Or more content, I might say introductory material or something. Ah, yes, okay. Make it clear what we're talking about. Good, all right. Okay. And let's leave you time to get water before GSOC. <laughs> Actually, no GSOC, but I, I'm... Oh. It's been a very long day, so I'm ready to end. Oh, I do need to tell both of you, no docs office hours next week. I'm taking we the week off. That. I hope you find some of your progeny who'd like to see you. <laughs> if not, Great. maybe you could bring, you know, excellent experienced grandparents looking for grandchildren to visit for the week. <laughs> Diraj, Diraj, I'm sorry, but Meg is giving me a little bit of a hard time here. <laughs> We've had some adventures planning our time next week where we want to go see our grandchildren because 
Well, some of them live too far away. Others mm -hmm. of them got sick recently and just got COVID-19. Oh. <laughs> so, yeah, they're fine. You know, they're going to be great. But, but it's just a, uh, you know, it's been an adventure trying to find out where the grandparents going to go to see their grandchildren. Mm -hmm. And the answer right now is they're not going anywhere. So we're and over the weekend, you can watch, I mean, you know, the March storms don't come out of nowhere. Maybe right, Pittsburgh right. isn't out of the question. Yeah, they're, we always there's getting a really nasty storm this weekend in the Northeast. Oh, so funny. it might be that next week is calm. Yeah, or or next week's a total train wreck. Yeah, uh, that's but that's okay. Yeah. Thank you to both of you. Thank you very much, Diraj, for being here. Thanks, Meg, for being here. Thank you. Thank you for hosting us. Have a wonderful trip. Yep. Yeah, Talk to you in yes. two weeks. All right. Best to Colleen. Bye. Bye-bye.